In the last set of the midseason patch notes for Rainbow Six Siege, we discovered that Jaeger's pick rate is very high, hovering at just above 90%. On the attacker's side, not even Ash or Zofia come as close, and the pick rate distribution curve seems to be a lot more normal here. Now, I'm going to use a lot of statistics terminology in this video, so some of you studying this in college or high school right now might understand what I'm talking about. So if this seems really obvious to you, bear with me, because I'm trying to explain it to everybody else watching. I want to show you guys just how high that pick rate is, because just seeing this on the chart to somebody who hasn't studied statistics doesn't really show as much as an outlier test will. An outlier to the average person is pretty easy to define. It's something that stands out. The definition of an outlier in statistics still encompasses that, but to truly explain it to somebody, you have to be a bit more specific. An outlier in statistics is a data point. A data point being a measurement of something like Jaeger's pick rate as opposed to Mira's pick rate that deviates strongly from the rest of the data points you've collected. In our case, data points being pick rates of all defenders. It deviates so strongly that it unfairly skews the data collection in a certain way to the point that it becomes incapable of representing the whole distribution fairly. In English, it's so bad that you can't logically draw any conclusions about all of this that you're looking at other than... <laughs> it is basically the scientific equivalent of a bruh moment. Bruh. Now, you can draw a bell curve through this distribution of attacker pick rates, but that's not super helpful. In fact, it can actually mislead you a little bit because we're looking at two different distributions here juxtaposed on top of each other. To give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about in terms of distributions of pick rates and wind deltas, we have to look at them individually. And we have to create those charts individually, which I already did for you. This is called a histogram. It is a statistician's best friend because it allows you to see exactly how the data points in a set population that you've sampled are arranged. Oh, what we are looking at is the frequency yeah. at which data points within a specified range that we are collecting occur. For example, we can see that 11 operators have a wind delta between 0 and 1.5% on the defending side. Both the histograms for attackers and defenders resemble that of normal distributions. Although it is a little bit skewed to the left on this chart because of glass and fuse in the attacker chart, and it's skewed to the left in the defender chart because of castle. But when we get into the presence charts, it looks a little bit different. It resembles a Pareto distribution. Who's that? That's Bernie Sanders at the door, and he wants to talk to you about how 20% of attackers make up 80% of operator picks in Rainbow Six Siege. Look. 20% of the operators in Rainbow Six Siege take up 80% of the pick rates, Joe. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are you asking for, specifically? Like, do you have a- what policy do you have in mind? Well, right out of the- And why is it legal weed? What I'm asking for is this. I am once again asking for an astronomy rotate. Not radical. Not radical. Oh, wow. If we run an outlier test, and you can look up the specific math about how an outlier test works in the description, okay, but if we do one for attacker pick rates, we don't really find anything out of the ordinary when we're running at a 5% significance test. But we can look at the Pareto distribution once again that comes up with defenders, and we can see that Jaeger is so far down the chart that he skips a histogram bucket entirely to have his own category. And when we do an outlier test for defender pick rates, we find that, yep, Jaeger's pick rate is indeed oh, nice. an outlier. Jaeger's pick rate is skewing the data and making it difficult for us to really analyze it thoroughly. Based off of this, we can logically conclude that a lot of people feel a very, very strong compulsion to bring Jaeger and Rainbow Six. And as someone who also has a strong compulsion to bring Jaeger and Rainbow Six, I feel like I am uniquely qualified to explain why. There's basically no scenario in which bringing Jaeger is not helpful. Jaeger is the quintessential example of a high floor operator. If you had a fantasy sports team, you would put him in 100% of your lineups because you have guaranteed value from him. There is no point at which he is going to be below a certain number of points unless he gets injured or something really stupid happens. I should clarify though, you're not playing Jaeger because you think he's going to ball out for a million points. You're playing Jaeger because you can say with a reasonable degree of confidence that he will not go bust. Probably. Jaeger has a good gun on defense, like a 7 out of 10 gun. And the more that I've learned about the game in the past couple months, the more I've realized how much I've been understating the value of his gadget. Jaeger's gadget isn't just good. It's really good. 
on. And why is it good? Well, I have a Goyo, I have a smoke with this deployable shield, I have a Maestro camera, and I'd also like them to not get flashed or smoked out of their hiding spots when the attacking team starts their execute. Gadget economy is one of the most important aspects about Siege, more than just being able to gun, in my opinion. It's about manipulating the map and manipulating enemy positioning. It's not just helpful for defenders to have some kind of protection from throwables in Siege, it's necessary. I haven't even gotten into why we should nerf Jaeger in the first place. Surely we can bring him closer to the mean of wins and pick rate, the mean win delta on defense being negative 0.32%. Jaeger has a win delta of about 1%. He's not really over the top in terms of his win rate. If we're using this distribution of win deltas to make a guesstimate as to who's overpowered and who's not, we could say that Malusi is not overpowered because... Are we going to say that Rook is overpowered? Because he has the same rating as her. Now, I understand that Malusi has been banned a lot, so I'm sure that her data might look a little bit different if we're not taking bans into consideration. But guys, are we seriously going to look at Smoke? and say that he's a worse oh, operator than Oryx? If we're just going off of this data and I plug in an outlier test of wind deltas for defenders, again, at 5% significance, Jaeger doesn't even go a full standard deviation away from the mean, which tells me that Jaeger isn't overpowered. His win rate is slightly above average, but yes, it is slightly above average nonetheless. So if you're really serious about it, I personally think there are more pressing matters in the game to address personally, but if this is one we want to prioritize, let's consider making his gadget more active instead of passive. This would add, for one, a skill-based element to playing Jaeger, and I think we can all agree that's okay. It also makes him less capable of doing everything. It would curb his roaming power a little bit because it would force a Jaeger player to have to make a decision between do I snipe grenades or do I snipe attackers. If there is an active element to the gadget, I think that it should be activated kind of like the remote detonated charges we already have in the game, wherein it will start working for a certain period of time but perhaps it could snipe an infinite amount of projectiles. It kind of defeats the purpose of a trophy system to not be a passive piece of utility that can run all the time, but it's a video game, and I understand that we're trying to keep it balanced. All right, cool. We made a change that could bring Jaeger slightly down in terms of pick rate and win rate closer to the mean. His pick rate's still going to be high. It'll probably float around 70%. That's a good thing, right? Are we going to be happy with that? Are you going to be happy with that? I don't know. Are we going to be here three months later looking at his pick rate still being high and going, Oh, we didn't do enough. Like, what is an acceptable pick rate for Jaeger? 60%? 50%? We haven't done anything to the attacking meta and the fact that they rely almost exclusively on throwables and launchables to clear defender utility. In fact, the hard breacher that we just added to the game uses throwables as his hard breach gadget. I think Zofia and Ash are still going to remain part of the top 20% of pick rates. I want to run a thought experiment here real quick before we go any further. Let's say Jaeger is overpowered, therefore we should nerf him. If Jaeger was overpowered, that would seem like a logical statement. But based off of Yubi's own data, it would appear because his win rate is not abnormally high, and I showed you the outlier test, he's not. If Jaeger's pick rate is too high, we should nerf him. Uh, okay, let's revert that Goyo nerf because his pick rate's too low, guys. Come on. Let's buff Lion. His pick rate's too low. Anybody, uh, anybody want to do that one? See, this is where I kind of start to disagree with all the calls to nerf this one character solely. If we just nerf Jaeger and we don't adjust how the game is played, he'll still be brought a significant amount. Maybe not an outlandish amount, but still a significant amount. And we'll be looking at this little dance that we're playing between Ash and Jaeger. Do you want the game to revolve around these two operators? Is, is, is that what you want? Is that what you want? Christ! I think that we should work a little bit more on trying to get the pick rate charts that look like this to look a little bit more like this. Right now, there is a right way and a wrong way to play Rainbow Six Siege, and that's going to happen in any video game. But as you can see, the pick rate charts on both the attacking and defending side prove that. I still think that the variability on the left ends of these curves gives us a lot of hope because it shows that there are a lot of unique combinations of team compositions, at least in terms of one or two operators on your roster, just maybe not the other three or four. Maybe Jaeger doesn't really need a nerf. Maybe we need to give attackers more reasonable means to get rid of the utility that defenders can bring. Because right now, we just added another piece of bulletproof utility. And if you're not stupid, when you bring that piece of bulletproof utility and your strategy revolves around that piece of bulletproof utility, you're going to bring something that will protect it. Jaeger revolves around the game's meta. The game meta does not revolve around him. In my opinion, if we're going to talk about bringing down Jaeger's pick rate, 
We need to talk more about adjusting the way Rainbow Six is constructed as a game and less about ways that we can make them worse. I don't know how many Ubisoft employees are going to watch this video and cringe at how much I managed to butcher uh, how their job works, but for the average person, I hope that it makes sense. Let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comments of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Deuces. Yeah.